Are you buying uh, Laramie fender flares for your truck? If you are, you might want to note that there are some uh, variations. So we're going to be chopping these guys off to make them fit. If you want mud flaps, they are different for trucks with uh, Laramie fender flares. So get them at the same time. And again, there's even variations on that. I didn't get the uh, mud flaps that came off of the truck that the fender flares came off of. So there's a, a, a rub line on here. But the intent is that I want to have uh, mud guards on here to protect the rockers. It would have been nice if the truck had that from the beginning. It just had uh, some little plastic pieces on here. I can't remember what they're called. But totally useless uh, for any real truck use. And uh, the rear mud flaps, again, they're different in order to make them fit. But it's going good. There should be some 3M uh, adhesive on here to stick into the truck. I did not replace it because I'm going to be taking these things off from time to time. I've got a hole here and I've actually put heavy grease all along the uh, lip of the uh, bed or the box bedside to uh, kind of protect it on the inside and the outside. It's actually there's a sandwich in here with some uh, foam in between the sandwich and that's causing a rot. Unfortunately it's weird I had like a 2004 of these trucks a half ton and it didn't have that foam in it from what I remember and you could just hose it out every year and keep things reasonable but uh, to do this, you might as well take your uh, wheel liners out at the same time and give the uh, a good undercoating to everything you can reach because it's a good opportunity. This one still has the paint protection finish on the bottom of the uh, bed rocker, whatever you call that. I always wondered why this side didn't have it and then started picking away at it. I found a location where uh, it became apparent that there's been a respray on this side of the truck and it was a, a bit of a struggle to get the uh, cover to go on here but eventually I did get it on so it's a Laramie cover on a non Laramie truck not a big deal it all kinda goes together and then I'm doing this side last because I gotta yank the turbo out and it's uh, a pain to do the fender liners and then I've got some rot here, very common location. Everything just kind of piles up in here. So I'm going to be coating that in the copious amounts of grease before I cover it up in order to make that last as long as I can. And then I'll have the wheel liners out of the truck from time to time and I'll deal with the uh, re-greasing as necessary. And again, to protect the uh, running boards and rocker area a little bit more. I don't know why they would come from the factory without having protection, but anyway, they do. So I'll try to correct it a little bit lower or later in the truck's life and keep it looking decent. So uh, once I get that, the uh, fender, or sorry, the uh, part there trimmed down and stuck back on. We'll take a, another look and see how I did. Hopefully I can get it reasonably good. Actually before I cut it I'll just show you my methodology for uh, how to line this up. So I've got there's some rubber push pins in here that are holding on the uh, extension. Then I'm lining up this mark here and then I'm going to put a piece of paper on here and trace it out and I'm going to hit it with my uh, compound miter saw and hope it all works out good. All right, got my line traced here so I kind of line up the cardboard so we'll follow this uh, gap filler here and be kind of parallel with everything so hopefully that works out. Here's my cutting station here and it uh, looks like we got it. It uh, I was zip over that with a file I think to take off the rough edge 
maybe a heated knife would be better to knock that edge off because this is actually painted and uh, I don't want to ruin that paint any more than it already is. But it's just a seven and a half inch saw or something. It's nothing serious. It's a bit floppy, so you have to kind of support it when you're cutting it. But that seems like the best way to get a, a good straight edge. Couldn't film it. It took all three hands to do that. All right, brace yourself. So we got the grease on the uh, fenders. Unfortunately, this is the way it's got to be in, in Canada. You get everything undercoated as best you can. Then you slap on as much grease as you can. The uh, fluid film is a decent spray, but I find that it gets must have some moisture in it because it freezes and you can't spray it when it's frozen. Whereas uh, fluid, or sorry, the uh, rust check, which is a red fluid, is a little more of a, a thinner film and it creeps well. That works good as well for spraying in the frame. I did use an air compressor to blow out the frame on the truck as well before squirting some into the available openings. Now if I had a, uh, a wand to spray in further that would be nice. But with this interlocking I can't be crazy with the uh, spray. Actually I parked over there after I had it undercoated and it made quite a mess of the road just in one evening. It'll go away eventually, but uh, I'd rather not have it in my driveway. So uh, I'm going to put this thing on, then we'll see what the uh, end result is. Well, there's the end result. So we've got it in there covering all the grease. The uh, cut, I feel like it worked out okay. It'd be better if you could view the uh, vehicle before the parts are taken off. Make sure it's got the same bumper that you've got. And then you can get the uh, mud flaps so they fit nice with the factory running boards. These are like the three quarter boards, I guess. You can go get ones that are super long that reach all the way to the rear wheel on the eight foot bed, but they don't attach to the back half of the truck, they just attach to the cab. That way they can flex separately. But uh, that's sort of everything that we have to do. I did go with a two-tone color. I thought that was going to be kind of neat and I'm happy with it. So thanks for watching.